Okay, guys, this was a special show exponent for me in a many, many ways. But one particular way is I finally got to meet a legend in the industry and a guy I've always admired, and that's Ralph Karsten with Atmosphere. And as you'll hear, uh, or maybe you already know, I was a big fan of his just online, just how he's able to set people straight on the Audio Gone forums with true knowledge, true experience, true good advice, contrary to what mostly you get online, especially Facebook and sometimes even on YouTube. This is a guy that is really dedicated to the hobby and really gives great advice and has always done phenomenal products. But in particular, what you're going to hear in this video, I have two videos with him. One is this video, which talks about his Class D amps, which performed phenomenally with the potpourri, led to a bunch of sales, uh, as every show has. But you're going to hear why he's pivoted to Class D and why most people <laughs> uh, echo what I've been saying for a while, that tube amps are kind of on borrowed time. Unless you're the elite of the elite, uh, Class D and other designs are really putting... Uh, tubes in the rear view mirror for a variety of reasons and that's the case with Ralph He's going to explain though in detail and as well I have another expert on the zoom Mike Robner and he is one of the inventors of class D So this is a very important zoom for you guys to really hear from experts not sock puppet uh, accounts on forums and whatever other sources you use true experts as to why Ralph has pivoted Class D, and you may want to start looking at this technology as well. Enjoy, guys. Quick, Mike, you were last last time for Dallas. Why don't you get? I'll give you center stage in terms of what your thoughts on the. I know you had. Um, is Ralph Karsten joining us? That's me. He's on. Oh, Ralph. Okay, sorry. You don't have your your camera on. Is that uh, is that what's going on here? Yeah. Can you turn on your camera? Do you have you? We'll give it a shot. I thought I had it on. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, okay. there he is. There. <laughs> Okay, let me go a view, gallery view. Okay, Ralph, thanks for joining. Yeah, let's let's go ahead to you. Unfortunately, you had to leave early uh, because of the uh, your, an illness, but uh, great to see you at least Thursday for the uh, mixer. Your amps performed brilliantly, and as well as your preamp, they made it so well with the potpourris. And for Class D, I think maybe for people that don't know, you've pivoted not too long ago from OTLs, I mean, you still offer them, but to this Class D offering. You want to talk briefly about that amp for everybody? Well, um, yeah, I suppose I can. Um, I was at Expona. Uh, we were uh, we were in the uh, second floor. We had some very large rooms. This is before the pandemic. And next door to us was, um, I think it was the, the Class D audio company. Uh, I, I just remember the designer's name was Tommy and he passed away a few years ago, but he had the, the cherry and the maraschino right. stuff. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, I went in there and came out uh, having heard some recordings. I knew that um, I felt, you know what, if we don't get a handle on this, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to get left behind. And um uh, so uh, I came home and began researching the whole Class D thing. And um, we spent a long time doing it because, um, you know, I hate to put it this way. Uh, uh, there's, there's, of course, the measurement crowd out there. But they're a minority. Most people, if they go into a brick and mortar store, they're going to buy something, maybe because they heard a good review on it or read a good review but probably because the dealer hooked something up in a and that's that's how brick and mortar stores stay alive so uh we knew we had to get the amp to sound as good or better than what we made in our tube stuff and we were already getting good reviews and awards in the high-end press for our stuff for years or decades so uh that was really the goal and uh you know it it took a few years and most of it was just getting rid of various noises inside the amp caused by 
parasitics, uh, uh, inductive parasitics and stuff like that. Um, and the GANFETs be um, handy in that regard because GANFETs have no leads on them. So you can really control uh, inductive parasitics on the board with those devices because there's just no lead length to the to the device itself. So uh, the result is you can get extremely low noise in terms of radiated uh, either through the air or uh, through the power cord. Uh, in fact, they, they produce lower noise than a lot of tube amps do as far as that goes. So, um, and it worked out for us that the nonlinearities in the amp, which are caused by the encoding scheme to a, a small degree and mostly due to the dead time. That's the major source of distortion in any class D amp. Uh, in our stuff results in low ordered harmonics. So, you know, if you know how tube amps make distortion, they tend to be mostly lower ordered harmonics too. So the class C's wound up sounding very relaxed and uh, easygoing and, uh, you know, but they have the characteristics of most good solid state amps that they can act almost like a perfect voltage source. So most speakers that are are designed to be driven by a voltage source. So, um, you know, we get a much wider marketplace than we ever were, were able to do with our OTLs. So uh, I, I have a set here at home that's, uh, you can see them perched up there on top of my speaker back there. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll play these things all day and they're cold to the touch and I don't miss the tube amps at all. I'm convinced at this point that uh, tube amps, even though I still enjoy them, still play with them, uh, and we've got some transformer coupled stuff, the, um, the, the power tubes for our OTLs are getting a little hard to get with the war in Ukraine and uh, uh, influences like that. So we're looking at producing products that maybe use different tubes. But I think the tube amps in general are on borrowed time. Uh, the thing is, uh, Class D is invading the musical instrument um, uh, market. And as they do that, uh, musical instrument market, guitar amps and bass amps, that's they're the major buyer of vacuum tubes, not high-end audio. So, you know, if if uh, Class D is getting into that market, uh, it's it's going to really, I, I'm just convinced that in 10 years, the, uh, the vacuum tube marketplace is going to look very different. So I'm of the opinion that you don't figure Class D out at this point. You're going to get left behind if you're an amp manufacturer. So anyway. Well, that's can't very about reliability either, because uh, I think the Class D is much more reliable than the tube, especially for somebody that's going to a console. Oh, Right, I mean, <laughs> what's that? Right. So, Ralph, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. I was a founder of D2 Audio and did the first class D amps at TI and Cirrus Logic. Wow. And so I've got uh, multiple patents in class D power stages. And uh, my partner, Skip Taylor, did all the reference designs for EPC and GAN systems. Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah, very familiar with it. So uh, I've got uh, 20 plus 30 years of uh, Class D experience. So uh, in relation to tubes, yeah, Class D can be extremely good. Uh, the output filter is really the limiting factor in it because yeah. of the phase shifts. That's where the biggest problem is. So, um, and then there's open loop and feedback derivatives. And there's upsides, downsides to each one. But I kind of agree with you. I have friends who do tubes. And and it's like a, a class D amplifier is like a single-ended tube amp as far as distortion goes. Because uh, you don't have crossover distortion like a class A, B amplifier. Right. It doesn't really exist. So uh, if you do the designs right, and depending if it's a digital in or analog in, everyone I've worked on in design, I could be the tube amp all day long. Yeah, that's that's my opinion as well. Uh, the um, I hate to put it this way because the measurement guys hate it, but, you know, it's all about that first watt. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's what the tube people always say, that's what you got to have. Well, 
a class D can have that in spades. Yeah. I mean, uh, the only other tube amp I thought that uh, I would beat it out was the uh, Wavec 150 watt amplifier that costs 325 grand with mm -hmm. silver wire transformers. Other than that, yeah. Kind of, uh, GAN is uh, definitely king. Now, as far as reliability goes, uh, the guys who are buying chips like the Fozzies with the TI parts in it, mm -hmm. those things blow up left and right all day long. We, we, so, uh, we, we've had some yeah. of those shop, a, a variety of, uh, you know. So uh, reliability yeah. is really uh, an art in getting these things to last a long time. Yeah, that's uh, I. Uh, that's um, that's totally true. My my experience with the TI uh, chips because uh, we tried some of those amps. Uh, you know, for the money, they're fabulous. But yeah, uh, for but a couple bucks, yep. they're in all the ones I've heard. They tend to sound kind of boring. Yeah, I and mean, uh, oh, so I, I I I can't say what they'd be like. I didn't have enough time to spend with them. Or the gumption actually to build a proper power supply for them, and I think that's one of the problems uh, a lot of the Class D designers don't really understand is how important it is to have a really good supply. Yeah, although at the show in Dallas, one of the best rooms I heard used a tube amp. It was yeah. tube gear, and uh, well, if it's done right, it can be great. Yeah. So uh, I, you know, I don't know how it was at Exponent with uh, getting any rigs. Jason, did you find any rigs with tube amps like, you know, number one? For well, I mean, amp the bottom? tube amp alone is such a small part of the equation when you're yeah. talking about a room, and especially in most of the rooms at Expona, you'll see my videos. I didn't even get the sweet spot. Uh, the noise floor is so high. So attributing a room to the tube amp alone is very tough yeah. in Expona. <laughs> Uh, but I think, I think I have a siloable video I can cut out from this zoom just from you guys and having Ralph talk about tube amps being outdated. I've been saying that for a while. I mean, all due respect to my friends in the tube amp maker thing, but we have one of the foremost experts in the world and I'll just give a prop and shout out to Ralph. Cause this is the first time me personally meeting him, but he's been a big influence in terms of the only reason I would ever go to the audio gone forums in the past for the past 20 years, the only time I would ever go was to hear Ralph was very generous with his time sharing good information. Almost everything you read on audio gone forums is trash and very bad and sock puppet accounts and all kinds of trash. And uh, I want to give props to Ralph for setting a lot of people straight with different <laughs> replies over the they past. Don't <laughs> What's that? <laughs> They don't always like it, but I... <laughs> I... They don't like it, but I do. I like it. I like you setting people straight. I also remember you were one of the first to espouse the zero auto formers. Um, I used them myself, and even on solid state amps, those were effective, and you have OTLs that they were effective in help, helping me. Uh, so, yeah, there was just a lot of history that I finally got to meet you. Great, great to meet you, uh, and definitely we'll siloable a video just on what your amps did <laughs> very good uh sounding and the preamp as well mating to it is still the two preamp right yeah okay yeah uh, that uh, i sh our two preamps were the first balance line two preamps in the world uh we've embraced balance line as just about as long as we've uh, done the otl thing uh, we've been building balance line product for high-end audio for home audio use longer than anybody else around. Uh, and the way we do it in our preamps is a direct coupled balanced output that uh, you know uses a circuit called a circlotron, which is mm -hmm. the same circuit we used in our OTLs. And uh, running that in a preamp, uh, we had Thorin's... Um, try to do that a few years ago, but uh, they were, I guess I really don't want to talk about that, but uh, we, we have patents in the area. I'll just put it in that way. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a pretty pretty good way for tubes to drive a balanced line without an output transformer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you, you have the ability to drive 600 ohms uh, and support, uh, you know, plus four dBm uh, which is 
you know, studio standard stuff uh, and, and, you know, basically be immune to ground loops and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it has that, I think that whole direct couple concept is a, is probably the biggest strength of those preamps.